Like millions, I was glued to the TV on Monday night watching Wills and Harry talk about their mum, Princess Diana, who died 20 years ago next month. And while the 90-minute documentary reminded us what an incredible mother she was, why did the princess, who spent a lifetime demanding the privacy Diana never had, suddenly decide to share their innermost feelings about her with the nation? I get their need to honour their mother, but it wasn't long ago they were airing their issues around mental health in a series of highly publicised interviews. And here they are again, inviting us to feel their pain. The pain millions of us feel every day. My question is, should they have done? Should the man who is to be king and his brother really be bearing their souls on TV? Because that's what Diana did in that infamous Panorama interview when she said there are three people in this marriage. Those words opened a door into Diana's private life that even death has never been able to close. And she regretted it. Maybe this documentary was an attempt by Woods and Harry to do what their mum did, to gain legitimacy by showing us their vulnerability. The princes say they won't ever speak so openly about their mum again. The real question is, should they have done it at all? Is it our future king's job to emote to his subjects? And will letting it all hang out emotionally be the hallmark of William's reign? Let's hope not. Because as essayist Walter Badgett once said of the monarchy, its mystery is its life. We must not let in daylight upon magic. Um, so you said, should they have done the documentary? I would answer very simply, yes, that they should. I watched that show and I had a huge amount of respect for both the boys. Um, they are somebody in such prominent public positions and Diana was somebody who lots of people felt that they knew and lots of people felt that they loved and what happened to William and Harry was tragic to lose their mum and I think it is incredibly brave to go out and actually be honest about what they've experienced and the pain and I'm sure they've got multiple reasons for doing that, one of which is to keep the legacy of their mum alive because mm. They've got children now. Those children will never know Diana. Um, and it's kind of talking about her, sharing the memories, is a great thing for them to do as a family. And for everybody else, there's always been this appetite to talk to the boys about their mum and what happened and all the rest of it. They're trying to control that and do it on their terms. And I've got massive respect for them. And I think that what they did would have helped, to quote you, the millions of people that feel a similar pain having lost their own mums or siblings or whatever. I've got nothing but respect for them for doing it. Well, I mean, that's fine. You say that they did it to keep her legacy alive. Diana's legacy is still very much alive, whether they had done that or not. And, and I don't believe that doing a documentary was, was the way to honour her, if you like. But no, this is, these are two guys, especially William, who has spent a lifetime railing against media intrusion. He said the only time he ever saw, on that documentary, he said the only time he ever saw his mum cry was a result of media intrusion. And what he also said on that docu documentary is, you know, <laughs> you have to be very, very careful of letting the media in, and he has been, because once you've let them in, you can't keep them out. And that's what Diana found when she did that interview with Martin Bashir, that panorama interview. The world was wanted to know her business permanently after that. But, but more practically, you know, I don't want our future king, as I just said there, emoting. The queen has never in her entire life given an interview. She is the most respected of the royals. It, and, and she has suffered many tragedies, much pain. And, and it is inconceivable that she would do something like that. And this idea, you know, I think it was Little John said in his column this week that Diana popularised the cult of confession. She did. And, and after her death, people kind of lived through vicarious grief, other people's grief. And I don't think that's what the royals should be doing. And that's what struck me that this was done. Carol, you say the Queen. You're right, the Queen has never given an interview. But I want to take you back to the events that you mentioned some 20 years ago, mm -hmm. which was the, the, the death of Diana. And many people thought that this was possibly as close to the tipping point as we've ever had with the royal family. Yeah. It was deemed that they weren't really responding to public grief. They didn't get the sense of the nation. They were closeted up in Balmoral. I sense that possibly that was the way of dealing with the boys, and it's not for me to comment what's right or wrong. But she did. you say that you don't want a future king emoting to his subjects. Well, I put it to you. Let me show you this. I think that is the current queen emoting to her subjects. Since last Sunday's dreadful news, we have seen throughout Britain and around the world an overwhelming expression of sadness at Diana's death. We have all been trying in our different ways to cope. It is not easy to express a sense of loss, since the initial shock is often succeeded by a mixture of other feelings, disbelief, incomprehension, anger, 
and concern for those who remain. We have all felt those emotions in these last few days. So what I say to you now, as your queen and as a grandmother, I say from my heart. And just to sum up, to, before I allow the others in, I, I would say we belong to a different generation where we just expected kings and queens and senior army officers just to... The, it, the world has moved on. I've had the pleasure of meeting both William and Harry as part of that mental health campaign when they opened a, an academy that's owned by the radio company that I work for. I don't know them as well, William as well as Greg does, but I was bowled over by what stunning young men they are. I accept your point. We don't want to see them every week. That is ridiculous. But up to this point, I'm still with them. I mean, that, uh, let, can I just answer that, that piece of film? We all know... Also, the media, you know, she was forced to do that. She didn't want the Queen didn't want to do that. She had she was forced to respond to the public grief, to the, the flowers that were gathering outside. She didn't want to do that. that. That is not her way. And it's not the King or the Queen's job to, to emote in this way, to bear their soul. No. I don't want to feel their pain. It's I just want them to get on with their job. No, do, well, so does twenty seven mean seventeen Cal, mean that Cal. everyone has to say what they feel emotionally? No. Well, just to quickly add, and then I know Greg, you want to uh, comment. Um, I totally agree with Nick and Michelle. I think that it's a different generation, and the work that William and Harry have done in terms of allowing young men to express the issues and the problems that they are experiencing should be completely commended. And I think William and Harry, uh, Rio Ferdinand, Brendan Cox, Freddie, Freddie Flintoff, even Jay-Z now mm -hmm. is talking about their vulnerabilities as men. And we have so many issues regarding young men and uh, suicide and depression. And actually what these young men are doing is leading the way for a new way of being. And, 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 and much like Nick said, yeah. this is a new generation. And if if these boys want to be relevant, then they have to be in touch with people, don't you think? Yeah. I, um, I watched the documentary, no one mm. would obviously talk about it, I watched it. I thought it was very good actually. I, I mean it was clearly a perspective, it was not an open, you know, from both sides, and it was a perspective. I thought um, both the princes came across well, I thought William came across particularly well, given that he's the less uh, like charismatic of the two. Yeah. Uh, and I thought, but. I mean, when you, I think back to the death of Diana, um, what do you remember of the two boys going to church that morning and then the two boys walking behind the Which we now they were effectively bullied into doing. Into doing. And I think, I think that's the value of it. I think it, that it puts all that into a perspective. And I think they also have said that this is it. This is it. They won't do it again. This is their account. They, they wanted something the that talked about their mother. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. And I thought, I mean, you know, I, I did meet their mother at a, at a lunch one day, and, and um, I mean, she lo she loved being Princess Diana. She yeah. loved being, the, she loved the publicity that went yeah. with it, and she loved all that. Okay. And but she was, you know, I watched the documentary, and mm. I, I was quite surprisingly impressed by her. Yeah. In that documentary, yeah. I really thought, yeah, she did do some real things. But I mean, the stuff on AIDS. When you, when yes. you know, you she mean, led the way well, on go, that. Well, remember yeah. back in that, I mean, people wouldn't touch people wouldn't touch, with those. Yeah, yeah. And she changed all that, yeah. and I thought that well, was you knew profound. That before that documentary. But I mean, oh, don't I didn't you know think, that before, you, but, yeah. you, but you both know that this was a sugar-coated version of the truth and the times and of Diana's life. And, and, but well, I think that... You've seen through the suns. What do you expect them to say? Well, well no, I don't expect them but, but it was a sugar-coated version of the oh. truth. But also, the danger of them doing this is that they become like celebrities. You just mentioned a whole host of celebrities there. That's the danger when, when you do this sort of stuff. And, and then, and then they're, they're not the relevant as royals anymore. stiff upper lip are gone, Carol. Well, I don't we need to be able to express our emotions, why would men you, and women. Why would you resent anybody? I resent it, I just don't think they should be doing it. But why, why would you not think that somebody should use their platform for good? And we know, we've mm. discussed it on this program before, the rise of mental health issues okay. and the stigma that does still surround it. Yeah. And we've all agreed that actually conversations about it are good. Um, you know, the changes, the heads together stuff that the, the princes are doing is fantastic. They're using their platform for good on an issue that is incredibly serious. I don't see why you've got a problem with well, it. Well, right, it's got to stop. It, it, we can't do any more. And I think, Greg, you said that they said that this will be it. Yeah. And, and, I sense that. That. And, and that must be it, because otherwise some yeah, of the majesty 
electricity, small m, will be lost. I agree with yes, you there. Yeah, yeah, what, can, what, I, can I just I, answer the mental health yeah. thing? You know, there was a hysterical overreaction to, to their involvement in that. And, and actually, many experts have come forward since, the, the professor at the Royal Institute of Psychiatry for a start, and said, people must not confuse depression, sorry, must not confuse anxiety and grief with mental health mental illness. It's not a mental illness. No. And, for, and to pretend that it is. And I don't think Prince, uh, hang Prince on, William having this stilted conversation with Lady Gaga can, changes Carol, anything. can I just show a clip which to me shows that they have given it a lot of thought. This is what William said when he first got engaged to Kate. So let's have a look. That's kind of almost why I have been waiting this long as I wanted to give her a chance to see and to back out if she needed to um, <laughs> before it all got too much because you know it's I'm trying to learn from lessons done in the past and I just wanted to give her the best chance to, to settle in and, and see what, you know, what happens the other side. And I'm, I'm also glad that I've, I've had the time to sort of to grow and understand myself more as well. So hopefully, Does that mean I've done <laughs> hopefully well? good, do a good job, yes. Good. They are measured. They think this stuff through. And I don't think this is something that was just decided on the huff. They really oh, understand think, how important true. it is. I, think, I, think that, I don't think they did on the hoof at all. I mean, let's not forget, it was only a year ago that William was getting a lot of flack from people because he wasn't doing enough royal duties. He was accused well, of getting, being lazy. flack from the press. Yeah, yeah, well, OK. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was you. getting flack. <laughs> Whatever. He was getting flack for not doing enough royal right, duties. From me. Like you. Doing a from me. Of shit <laughs> at the air ambulance. <laughs> and and right spending millions on all. his mansions. And now all <laughs> that's gone away. Now suddenly he's St. William. And I just, th I just think this is a dangerous road to go down. Because what now makes them royals? What, what distinguishes them from celebrities in the future? Oh, they were born but, into but the royal Carol, family. I That's just want to come start. back on your thing about mental illness, by the way, because you were saying that grief is not, um, natural and normal and not a mental illness. Well, no, I but didn't what, say that. The, the, the professor said So, yeah, so I would agree that. that grieving and all the rest of it, that's a normal emotion. But what happens often is that that grieving is suppressed. Suppressed, yeah. And when it's suppressed and not dealt with properly, that's when it becomes something that's problematic. And that's why and I think... in men. Yeah, that's why I'm saying that this kind of conversation is healthy and normal and should be encouraged. Well, what was interesting, I thought, of all of this was, was the two princes saying how little they'd talked about it together mm. over the years. It was almost as if it had been put aside. And I suspect for them, this is quite a profound moment. Yeah. Yes. That they actually can say, this was our mother, this is what we remember, this yeah. is how much we love, this is what we think of her. Yes. And now we can move on. If you're a yeah. royal supporter, though, then the family is in great hands, isn't it? Yes, the family it is, is in great hands with that.